What's good, YouTube? Gabe here from GabeCore, back at it again with another furry ninja deck profile. You might be asking yourself, but wait a minute, Gabe, didn't you upload a new Batama Dominate deck profile upload like a week ago? The answer is yes, little Timmy, but you know what the, all the other answer is? Set 12 just came out, so we have new support, which gives me a full-on excuse to upload a completely new, but also completely the same deck. So let's get started. What's this starter do? Stealth Dragon Madoi. Stealth Dragon Madoi. My boy. Madoi. So what you do with this boy, Madoi, is when your when a dominated unit attacks during your turn, you can move Madoi to the soul to give any rear guard 3k, not necessarily the one attacking, and you get to draw a card. So you can give it to the card that's attacking, you can give it to another card that you're going to dominate in the future, you can give it to one of your own spicy boy rear guards to increase the drop count from guarding, and you get a draw off of it so you can get into another more important rear guard, so Madoi is a good boy. Also Gabe confirmed Scaly, look at them, look at them big ol' eyes. Um, Next, we go into the second scaly in my ninja scaly army, Demon Stealth Dragon Shiranui Aboro. This may come as a surprise to you, but its skill text has not changed since the last deck profile that I uploaded. Its skill is actually exactly the same, where at the beginning of your ride phase, you can call one of your opponent's cards from their drop zone to their rear, and at the end of the turn it dies. So what you do is you get out a rear guard that you want to dominate in another attack target so you can attack more times. Because you know, you're supposed to be a multi-attack deck now and yeah, you gotta possess things because you're a spooky scary antagonist scaly dragon. And he, he apparently really likes fingering. Look at him go. With his fucking sword and mask. And circles behind him. Look at him go. He's a he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Next, we got the remarkable stealth Miles Morishige. Uh, what you do with it is you choose one of your rear guards and you rest it. Your opponent gives one of their rear guards three k, and if they do, it gets ten k. So this skill text has also remained unchanged since the last video. So, the reason why it has the if you do clause is, again, if they have no rear guards or all of their rear guards have resist, you can't give more Shige 10k. So, you paid the cost of resting a card because you wanted to rest a card. It's a good card because you don't want to ride anything else. Again, Oboro is the only thing you ever want to ride, so there's no real reason running the other Shiranui because if you're on the other Shiranui, you're still going to be negging. So Morishige lets you have an even stronger offense because the other Shiranui doesn't do anything on its own turn. On, on the rear guard, rather. Stealth Dragon Genkai. Because it doesn't have hands, but it can hold a fucking katana, apparently. Backwards. When a dominated unit attacks, uh, you can counter blast one, soul blast one. Genkai gets 2k, and you get to draw a card. Which is, uh pretty dope because you can just keep plussing because there's a bunch of stuff that goes into the soul and there's a pretty decent counter charge engine so you can use this boy's ability pretty frequently. Genkai's a good card. You should you should definitely probably run Genkai. Next we got the uh, Stealth Dragon Furry who is a scaly but he's a furry apparently so here we are in the God's Year 2017 in breeding with furries and scalies. Um... What you do is you soul blast one, you pick another one of your opponent's rear guards in their drop zone, and they call it to rear, kind of like Shiranui Aboro, but they have to call it to an open rear, so they can't call on top of anything to retire something, and you can't use it while they have a full field just to get a free retire out of it. But it's a good card, because if you're playing against a Mirage deck, it forces them to have a rear guard. Also, when any unit attacks, it gets 2k, so it can hit some spicy numbers. So, now the first actual addition to this deck, and what would a Gabe Core Nubatama Dominate deck profile be without me running proxies, because Miles just hasn't fucking sent me the, t the card that we pulled in our fucking sneak peek. So we're running four copies of Tama Hagane Matsu, this 
Shibari Kusari should be the Matsu, but Miles is being a dumb fuck. Fuck you, Miles. Um, I, I'm gonna just be real here. I didn't play test Ungai. Uh, when Miles sends, finally sends me my shit, I'm pretty sure I pulled a couple Ungai, so I'll probably test out some of them. Because now that I actually read what it does again, I think it's a good card. I need to think about what I'm going to drop for it. But Metsu is also good. So I'm not, like, upset or mad at myself. But, like, maybe consider running Ungai. I don't know. Uh, or something. I don't know. So, uh, what Metsu does is when you ride or call it, you can bind up to one card from the top of your deck face down. So you... And this does count to vanish delete, so if you're playing against deleters, be fucking wary, um, because vanish delete is the exact same thing, because Bushi wanted to ruin my dreams, uh, and when a dominated unit attacks, you can counterblast one, choose a face down card from your bind zone, add it to your hand, and if you do, Tama gets 10k, um, so what, something of note is, if you need to add something to your hand to get the 10k, so you can't, like, counterblast one, get 10k if you have no bound units, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. So, this is fun, because while the first part helps Vanish Delete, this hurts Vanish Delete, because you fucking... If they Vanish Delete your stuff, you can just add it back with Tama if you run out of resources. Um, uh... Well, the thing is, this what's what's nice about this card is it has a lower cost than Genkai because you don't need a Soul Blast, and it gives you more power than Genkai, so you can get 10k versus 11k up the first. But why I like Genkai is, for Tama Hagane, you kind of need to see multiple Tama Haganes to actually get some legitimate pluses, because if you call Tama you bind the card and you add it to your hand. You can't add anything with Tama until you get other Tamas to bind stuff. Even if you only see one Genkai, you can at least draw a couple cards off of Genkai. But I do like Tama, so I don't know... My my ratio is probably going to be really weird if I run Ungai. Like, I'd probably do, like, 3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three of all the cards I have in 3 Ungai. But I do think Tama Hagane is a good card, but there are merits to why you would want to use Tama and merits as to why you would want to use uh, Genkai. But I do like Tama. Also, I gotta regain that furry status. Also, I played Nubatama when BT13 first dropped, and the original Tama Hagane is a good card. So this is nice retrain nostalgia. Also, for any weebs out there, could you tell me what Metsu means? I, I, don't, I don't know what Metsu means. Under the Grade 1s, we're still running uh, Stealth Scaly Utsuroi, which, uh, when a dominated unit hits a Vanguard, while Utsuroi is in the drop zone, you pick another Utsuroi in the drop zone, send it to the bottom of the deck, and add Utsuroi from drop to hand. So, like Ezra's, you need two Utsuroi's in drop, and it needs to hit, so it's a much worse Ezra's, but so it lets you recycle PG's, which is pretty fucking dope. And, yeah, that's all you need to say. Uh, I've considered running the Unflip PG. I've also considered running the After Image PG. I've also considered wanting to kill myself for th considering running the After Image PG. But, ultimately, I've picked Utsuroi over the Unflip PG. Uh, next, we got four copies of Stealth Beast Katari Gitsune. Let's you search out for your one version of Shiranui so you can fucking ride it, and it counts as a grade three so you can stride. Run four Katari Hitsunes if you want to be anywhere decent with this game. Next, we got the uh, Stealth Scaly Ten guy, who I finally have the copy of now, if, as you can see, and I'm not running that weird Fuki and Tenrei lineup, so here you go. This is for you, YouTube. So, uh, during your turn, while Ten Guy's on rear, if a dominated unit attacks, Ten Guy gets the ability at the end of your turn, move it to the soul, unflip one. So this is kind of like your uh, Gold Paladin Jerry clone, or your Smash Boxer clone. While it is um, a neg one on paper, because Genkai uses counter... Blasts and Soul Blasts, it's effectively a break-even in that context, 
but yeah, honestly, if it was, it sh they could have given it something else to be better. But like, you kind of need the soul and the unflip, so Tenga is still really good. Smashbox is probably the best clone out of all of them, because Tenga doesn't even get resist. So like, if you're playing against Link Joker and they lock your back row, or you're playing against uh, Overlord and for, not Blade Master for whatever reason, and they use Defeat Flare and they nerf your back row, you're just kind of fucked. So resist would have been cool, or another ability on top of the soul charge on flip would have been cool, but we work with what you got, and what we got is still pretty okay. The next addition to the um, furry convention that we call Nubatama is an actual furry, the stealth furry Mamo Danuki. I don't know what a fucking Mamo is, I'm pretty sure Danuki's supposed to be Tanuki, because I used to watch fucking anime like a nerd. So what this does is, much like Tamahagane, when you ride or call Memo, you can bind up to two cards from the top of your deck face down. So, luck, like as I said, if you you to, to use Tamahagane skill, you need to see other Tamahaganes. So you can also see the Memo Danuki, which is really nice. So that's like six cards that give you bind stuff to see with Tama, and Memo Danuki gives you two. So, if I were going to cut out. Uh, Genkai for if I was if I would go for Umgai for Furai for Taman completely cut Genkai I'd probably up Memo to four and only go two of uh, Tengai because I would want to see as many bound cards as I could. But yeah, Memo gives you more bound stuff and Memo has another fun ability where when your dominated unit when a dominated unit attacks during your turn you choose a face down card from your bind zone. And you can put it into your soul, and if you do, Mamo gets 5k. I um, I have done this before when I've really needed soul, but I have rarely ever really needed soul. I usually just use the buying stuff for Tamahagane draw plays. Unfortunately, Tamahagane is once per turn, and it really, if only it was more, then you could make it a fucking 29k beater and plus two, but Bushi can't let us be happy. But it's fine. I'm running two Mamo because it's a it's a decent it's a decent card and it helps with stuff and you can use Soul, so it's a it's a good furry. It's a nice furry boy. Next we have Alms Giving Stealth Miles Jiro Kichi, which I finally got my four copies of. It's Margol, but you can pick your opponent's rear cards, which is fucking dope, because that's what dominating is, and I got that fourth fucking copy. Uh, on to heal triggers, we're running four copies of Good Luck Smile Zashikahime, which is the uh, Fighters Collection heal trigger. Wow, you're never gonna fucking call a heal trigger because you have G-Guard, so you might as well use the one that has an ability for the G-Flip G-Guard, because why not? We got uh, four copies of the Stealth Scaly Noroi. So, it's your Shiranui crit. When your uh, Shiranui Vanguard attacks, you can move it to the soul, get 5k, and get a Ichimai draw. Look at that. Th that's his fapping hand. God, I hate myself. Uh, next, we have the hardworking Stealth Miles Torasada, which is Red Lightning. You move it to the soul, and you counter charge one. Simple, sweet. You use both soul and counter blasts. There's that fourth copy. There are no filthy stand triggers tainting this deck. Aww. Um, next, we got two copies of the G-Zone and my stealth dragon, Nagun Tenbu. So, counterblast one, you pick one of your opponent's rear guards and you dominate it. For each face up card in your G-Zone, give that card 3k. So if you're using it on your first stride, you'll give it 3k because of the persona cost. But if you use a late game as a beater, it'll be more than 3k. So you give it that 3k or more. And you can attack any of your opponent's cards with it. So you can attack another one of your opponent's rear guards to get rid of their own resources and make them go negative two. Like if you're playing against Luard and they have two rear guards, you can uh, dominate one, have it kill the other, and then because Magun Tenbu retires the card that you dominate after attacks, and that card's retired, they have no rear guards, so they can't use stride skill unless they run a bad card, like Dragon Driver Luard. 
If you want to say that Drag Driver Lure is a good card, please comment saying why you think so, so I can respond telling you why you're wrong. So yeah, you can really screw over their plays. You can screw over Messiah for the same reason, at least until we get uh, Alter Ego Neo Messiah. But even then, wiping out stuff is pretty legit. You can hurt Neo Nectar because of all the clans that need rear guards on the field. Why would they give uh, the calling from hand stride skill alt mile clause to the one that needs it, right? Like, why would Neo Nectar ever want to be good? It's fine. I'm not bitter or anything. It's it's fine. But yeah, Mugging Tenbu is a good card. You, I run it at two because I have a fifty dollar GR in here. If you don't have that fifty dollar GR, just run four Mugging Tenbu so you can save your fucking money. Uh, next we got four copies of Emma Stealth Miles Mujin Lord. Four copies. So, Counterblast 1, flip itself. For every face-up G unit you have, pick any rear guard on either, on any player's turn. Give On the other player's field, give it 4k. And if you give that 4k to an opponent's rear guard, you can dominate that card, and it attacks their vanguard. What's unfortunate about this card is, one, the 4k doesn't stack, so you can't give one card 8k to use it as beaters or to offset triggers. Two, it can only attack the vanguard, so you can't do board wiping shenanigans. And three, and perhaps the most heartbreaking of all, in it specifies opponents, so in a tag game, you can't, you can, well, you can technically pick your partner or your opponent's partner to give their rearguards 4k, those cards won't attack the vanguard because it only because rearguards can only attack the opponent's your opponent's vanguard and not any player's vanguard. Which is a really, really sad thing, but you know it's what we gotta deal with. This Mujin Lord shiny. Next we have the last you know what well yeah. We have the last change to this deck, we got one copy of Evil Eye Hades Emperor Shiranui Mukuro. I don't know what Mukuro means either, so uh, another weeaboo tell me what it means. Uh, yeah, this card is amazingly overrated. It's Soul Blast 2, flip any f face down G unit face up, choose one of your opponents, v and discard a card. Choose one of your opponent's vanguards, stand it, dominate it, it attacks all of their rear guards, and you perform the drive check for its attacks. So, what does this mean for people who don't know how ruling works? One, your opponent is actually not allowed to guard because they technically don't have a vanguard so they can't call things to the guardian circle, and even if they could intercept um, you're attacking everything at once, so they can't even do that. Two, you do get them fancy drive checks, and they go to your hand, so you basically get to do five drive checks and apply triggers before to have some fun shenanigans. And three, much like the earlier Magun Tenbu play I told you about, you can use it for board wipes to screw over Luard and Messiah, which is really fun shenanigans. But yeah, this card doesn't attack itself the vanguard doesn't attack itself so you can't do damage with it so it's really just for the board wipe and drive check so that's why it's mediocre i'm still waiting for that day where they let us attack um fucking dominate a vanguard that can attack itself but allow your opponent to guard they did it they basically did it with that fucking witch shadow witch stride so it can happen but yeah you run it at one because board wiping is fun and it gives you drive checks, so that's pretty fucking solid. We got a $50 trading card, the Ricto Stealth Scaly Sukumoricon. Counterblast 2 G Flip on stride, your opponent picks four cards in their hand and binds everything else. So basically, if your opponent's at five damage and they have gained a metric absolute of advantage, like they're playing Luard or ZTB or Battle Sisters, you say, hey, no and make that all go away. The issue is, if they have a PG and a G guard, because Nubatama, because this card doesn't dominate, and Nubatama has no rear guards that can activate dominate, they'll probably be fine if they have that PG in the heel, so you gotta be sure you'll be fine. 
Some people run the original Shira Nui to do like the Counter Blast 3 play, but that's a bit too inconsistent for me because it costs Counter Blast 3 involves being and it involves you being on a worse cult ride target. So I don't like that. But if you, you want to do it, go for it. Sukumorcon's a good card, apparently. Jabati. Uh Jibate, when your opponent calls a card to Guardian Circle from their hand, you can counter blast or soul blast, and they have to discard too. The fun part about this is because of how turn player priority works, if your opponent has three cards in their hand and they attempt to PG, you can make them discard before they can actually PG, because they both, both the PG and uh, Rikdo, Stealth, Scaly, Roku, Shakira, Khan activate on place, but it's your turn to you priority. So, that's fucking lit. So fuck perfect guards. We got... Sabrizzle, grade locking and grade stalling. This is a Shikaheim. Um, G Flip G Guard gives you more face up G units for your three fucking cards that like to have a lot of G units face up. It's fucking mediocre, but if you want to, you, if you want face up G units, there you go, and you can get a drop and draw. Uh, Rikdo Stealth Scaly Gahorakon. Uh, you, like I said in my last video, you really only need run. I, one, I run two because I have the space for it thanks to Sukumara Khan flipping anything. Uh, la, 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 la. Next, we got one copy of Dank Element Dismal because it's a perma PG for rear guard. You got a shit ton of bound stuff thanks to Tamahagane and Mamo to do Danuki, and you don't want to lose Tamahagane. Keep that shit alive forever. And lastly, but not leastly, Air Element Rectome, because it's a on G guard drop and draw. Because, you know, who doesn't love dropping and drawing and getting better rear guards? You can cycle through to get more Mamodanukis and more Tamahaganes. That's my uh, Ninja Furry slash Ninja Scaly deck profile. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could suffer through me talking and suffer through the fact that I barely made any changes to the deck aside from getting proxies in and out. I hope you enjoy our content. I found a a friend here who plays Vanguard, so we're going to be getting more New York style content with them soon. So you'll actually get to see me play over the next few months, people, or a person that isn't Miles, Richard, Jose, or Atlas. So keep a lookout for that and the usage of Daddy Dominate, Mama Maiden of, Mama Asha. Mama Musketeer and the biggest daddy Arboros.